Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Today I'm going to be covering a company called V3 Sound. They're out of Austria, the same country that brings you Bosendorfer pianos. So V3 Sound has these MIDI expander modules, and one of them, the one I'm going to be covering today, is called Grand Piano XXL. It comes in a box like this with the V3 logo up in front. And it says Grand Piano XXL right there. So, and what it looks like is it's this tiny little triangular shaped device. And it's got a bunch of I.O. on it. On the front, you just have two knobs, a volume knob and a reverb knob. So, I mean, that's the most popular thing when you're playing pianos. It's real easy to just grab the reverb and adjust to your heart's content. And volume, of course, you need to be able to control that too. And you've got a couple of lights on front. The red light that you're seeing over there means the power is on. Every time you hit a note, you'll see that yellow light to tell you it received a MIDI signal. So when you hit a note, that's a note on signal. And again, when I lift my finger off the key, you see it again, a note off signal. Anyway, uh, we're not gonna go into the depths of MIDI, only to understand that you do need a MIDI capable keyboard to use this. And I don't know of any keyboards anymore that are not MIDI capable. Now the old legacy MIDI uses the old five pin DIN jacks MIDI jacks, they, they look like this, okay? And the new ones use USB, and some of them use both. This can take both. Right now I've got a MIDI Legacy Jack in here. So that's what you're hearing, and it can also take USB at the same time. Now let me show you something really cool. Now. It used to be you have to have just a computer, a host, to take a USB keyboard and drive that with. This acts as a host. So watch this. Here's an iRig Pro, 37 keys, right? It's USB. So I'm gonna take this, just to show you real quick for a second. I'm gonna hook this up. hooked it up to the USB thing here and I got power from the USB bus there and now watch this so I can play this with that let me just take this back off and at the same time this too now Controllers are basically keyboards that don't produce any sounds of their own. And there are controllers designed specifically for that purpose so that you can hook it up to a sound module of your choice. And that V3 sound just blew me away with the sounds of the pianos alone that are in there. It's just so good. But before we get into all that, let's go over what the IO is on the back. All right, looking at the back panel going from right to left. You've got your MIDI in 5-pin DIN and MIDI out 5-pin DIN. And then you have a quarter inch left for mono, or you can use both the left and right for line outputs, left and right. And that's pretty much standard on any keyboard or device or anything like that. Then you have an eighth inch TRS stereo headphone jack. That just means a miniature plug, uh, just like your iPod or MP3 player or smartphone, that type of jack for uh, headphones. And then you have a damper pedal jack input, also capable of recognizing half damper pedals. Next to that, you have that USB-A connector, which I just used to show you that uh, iRig keyboard, how it works with that. Then there's the AC adapter power input and the power on and off switch. So real simple on that. Now, here's something really unique about this product. Now, the left and right quarter inch um, 
output jacks, the line outputs. You can take apart this thing and reconfigure a couple switches that are inside and make it two stereo quarter inch output jacks. I don't want to get too deep into that. Just know that it's there. And for all intents and purposes, we're just using the left and right quarter inch jacks going into a recorder right now um, so that you can hear what it sounds like. Now it's got four gigabytes of flash memory in there. So it's got a lot of sounds that are built in. It's got like 633 different instruments or sounds or voices, patches, whatever you want to call it. And you can add another 196 for percussion. And you got 256 notes of polyphony. And some of these even have uh, six voices per note. In addition to just left and right, they've got other layers that come in depending on how hard or soft you hit the keys. So it's pretty advanced in there. The main pianos in here are basically the Vienna, which is a Bosendorfer Imperial 290. And you have a Steinway D, a very popular Hamburg piano, they call it. And while these are all professionally sampled and everything, they also combine it with physical modeling. And the physical modeling they use is basically for string resonance, sympathetic resonance, note off modeling, um, sustained pedal grabbing, and all kinds of other things like that. That's how they do the physical modeling and they combine it with, the, of course, the samples. Now, we're gonna hear this in a second, but before I do that, I wanna explain something. In the old days, you had a MIDI device um, similar to this, and it had 128 different sounds. Things got a little bit more sophisticated since then, and now, while you have 128, you now have banks. So you have different banks. Each bank can have 128 different voices, instruments, sounds, patches, whatever you want to call it. Not every keyboard is able to issue a uh, MIDI instruction to this to switch banks. So if you can't switch banks, you're only stuck with the first 128. So that's why you need something like this. I'm using a Roland Phantom, which makes a great master controller, but you don't need to do that because there's apps out there you can run on your smartphone or your tablet or on your laptop or whatever that will interface with this. And those can get not only to the different banks so that you have you know, five or six different banks or whatever it is of 128 sounds each, you also have controls over all kinds of other things that you may not have access to with your MIDI keyboard. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. I've gone ahead and set up a scene in here that just uses the pianos in here. And you can see, oh, let's set that up so we can look at eight at a time. You can see I've set it up so that we've got Vienna, Hamburg, Vienna Rock, Hamburg Rock, Vienna Original, Hamburg Original, Vienna Softer, Hamburg Softer. And there's more. There's a lot more combinations using these, but these are the basics. So let me go over those and let's get see what these sound like. We'll start with the Vienna. really captures the true essence of a Bosendorfer. So let's go ahead, bring that down, and let's bring up the next one, which is the Steinway, Hamburg, Steinway D. Lovely. 
All right, let's bring that down and let's try the Vienna Rock. And let's bring that down and go with the Hamburg rock. See what that sounds like. Alright, and let's bring that down and go with the Vienna Original. All right, let's bring that down and go with the Hamburg original. And then there's the Vienna Softer. <laughs> And the last one that I programmed in here was the Hamburg software. Let's go back to the original one, which is just the Vienna. Okay, now, when I'm using a master controller such as this, look at all the stuff I have access to. Now, not every keyboard has this, but a lot of master controllers will have this. If you're just using a keyboard that's basic, uh, um, basic USB, uh, it's an entry-level keyboard. Basically, you're just going to have the keyboards used as a keyboard, and you're going to use a computer, or you're going to use a tablet, or a smartphone to change things around. And I'm going to show you that program in a second. But let me show you what a master controller can do, because you have it all contained in one. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go into my zone edit capabilities. And a lot of things are going to be similar here. Uh, this can control internal or external. Internal being the sounds that are built in. External being a device such as this. And I've got up to 16 sounds at once I can control with this. And right now I've set up the first date to be external or controlling this. And of course... If you look at the big picture here, 
you can see the first eight are external and the next eight are internal sounds. But I'm only going to work with the external right now. So that's what we're looking at. So if I go back to my Zillanetic, and we go to my external sounds here, you can see that the names here, that's something I put in. It doesn't get that from the device or anything like that. So you can choose rename and you can put in any name you want over there. Okay, but there's more. For each channel or a zone here, here I'm choosing one for channel one, two for channel two, and so on and so forth. They use things called most significant byte, leaf significant byte, and you don't need to worry about those right now, but basically the most significant byte, you can see they're all set to zero. That's for bank zero. And this PC number here is program change. So if you're looking at the chart, they give you this MIDI implementation chart. They're showing us here in MIDI, uh, bank zero, you've got in bank zero, you've got basically the first one is the Vienna, then the Hamburg, and so on and so forth. And I basically went with the first eight and programmed those into here for this demo. But there's 128 different ones to this bank, not just pianos. Um, you got some electric pianos in here as well. And here is where the most significant bit comes in because not every keyboard has this and if yours doesn't, you'll need to use a program to switch banks. And that's basically what bank number you have. So I'm looking over here and this is all bank zero so far. All right, here we go. I'm coming to bank one, which is most significant bit one. And that's where I would change this to one, and I change my program change to match whatever sound I wanted. So here's the program change right here, just to, to show you what this is like. Right now, we're just listening to the Vienna piano. As I change this, it changes whatever instrument I'm, I'm choosing. So to give you an example, I'm looking through this list, and if I want a Wurlitzer A200 with a Vibrato 1, that would be let's see, 44 over here. So really easy, you just find what you want. And of course, you don't, you're not expected to remember all these numbers, that's why you put them in here for something like this, so that they're already in there predetermined. So when you're playing with a band, uh, you can save this off to your registrations or memories or whatever your keyboard calls them, so that you can call them up easily next time, just based on their names or anything like that. And again, I'll, I'll get to the program in a second. So let me just get back down to um, the Vienna. All right, so that's how it's done here. But again, when you're using a master controller like this, there's even more parameters that you can get to over here. I can control the volume, and of course I can do that with the sliders and everything, and I can do that with this too. Um, the panning, I can get to the panning. Basically, if I want it to the left or to the right, or right in the middle so the user hears it equally from each speaker. Um, the amount of chorus that I can add to it, the amount of reverb. I can actually even set up what keyboard range I want. Maybe I just want it from here to here, or from here to here, or the whole keyboard like I have right now. So a lot of keyboards, master controllers will let you do that. So if I set the lower and upper range here, and I can even set the velocity for these things too. So 
I mean, how hard I hit it and so on and so forth. Then there's all kinds of other things like coarse tune, fine tune. I mean, it gets on and on and on and on, but you can program a lot of these things straight from your master controller to go through there. Now, like I said, simple entry-level keyboards are not meant to be master controllers, so that's where you need the program. So let's look at this program right here. This is uh, basically a MIDI mapper program. It's called MIDI Tool EX. And let me just bring this mouse up here to make it easier. And you can set up a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I was talking about. Here's your settings over here. You can do all kinds of things. All right, so right now I have this hooked up to the expander with a, uh, a cable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the computer here so that we can change things from that with the computer. So give me a second. Okay, now we're hooked up. Let's go over to our sounds here. And this was set up in Germany, or it was written in Germany, so you're going to see some weird spellings here if you're in the United States. Like accordion, we use C's instead of K's. You're going to see the two dots above the A's over here. But you, you get the gist of it. So. Here's an accordion, 4 plus 16. Here's an accordion celeste 88. Uh, here's a musette. I like the way those sound. Go into bass. There's an electric bass flat. Here's a bowed upright bass. There's an electric bass pick. Slap bass. And they have a variation of that. Let's try a different one. And if we go back to the variation one. All right. Blazer. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, okay. Basically, wind instruments. Here's a baritone horn vibrato. Hear that vibrato? Brass section classic. A flugelhorn. Alright, so you get the idea. You got all these different instruments, but some of these sound really, really, really good. So you definitely getting your money's worth with something like this MIDI expander because it's got the best sounding pianos for Bosendorfer and Steinway. So if you have a keyboard, basically, uh, let me give you an example. Yamaha and Kawai only use their own pianos when you're buying a keyboard from them. So if you're buying a Kawai, the only piano sounds you're going to get in there are Kawai piano sounds. So if you want a Bosendorfer or a Steinway, you're not going to get that with a Kawai. So you can add that with this. Very cool. So now you've got the best of both worlds. And the same thing with Yamaha. When you buy a Yamaha keyboard, basically they're going to give you Yamaha pianos. And Bosendorfer is owned by Yamaha, so you get the Bosendorfer, but you don't get the Steinway. This is a nice way to add that. And if you bought a 
introductory piano that basically has, you know, it's just there for you to learn with, but you want some really cool sounding pianos, that's where you add this into. All right, so let's go into some of the other things. And, and like I said, besides using a master controller, let's go to Grand Piano, and here's the things I was talking about. Now here, they have uh, Grand Latin Hamburg. <laughs> And let's just go into the regular Grand Piano Hamburg. And they have variations, original rock and softer, just like I showed you on the original or when I first started demoing this. I had that programmed into my master controller. So here's the original. Rock version. Softer. Okay. And we even have Honky Talk. So, very cool. And an upright piano variation. All right, now we even have layers. Grand pianos with layers. Here's the Grand Piano Hamburg, and we're setting, setting it up as a layered electric piano. Let's try it with a layered pad. And layered with strings. So as you can see, it is so easy with one of these programs to just control it the way it is. Now this, it actually comes with double-sided Velcro because the way it is, you're not going to just set it up on top of something and a lot of keyboards don't even have room for you to set it up on top of something. So what you do is take the double-sided Velcro put it on there and stick it onto your keyboard somewhere. Maybe even stick it onto the keyboard stand because once you got it set up, you do the volume and the reverb and you're all set. Oh, I forgot to show you the reverb on this. So let's go back to Grand Piano. All right. And we're going to do the Grand Piano Vienna original. adjust the reverb. Let's give it a little more. That may be a little too much, but you adjust it to your own liking. Okay, I guess Orgel must be organ, so let's see what we got there. Oh, we got different organs with different drawbar settings set up over here, too. So Here's one with the draw bars eight and the rest zeros, and this is going to be a fast Leslie. Oh, we don't need that much reverb here. And let's try the same thing with a slow. organ with vibrato. Alright, here's 
here's one uh, with a percussion. Organ 888, percussion slow. Uh, here's a full Hammond. Here's a theater organ, Mighty Tower. And here we go, organs with different registrations. Here's a classic organ pipe combi, Funds 8. Booker T. Jones. Anyway, you get the hang of that. Um, Ethel Smith. Well, you can play all day and, and probably not even try everything out. So there is so much here. Uh, let's try some, try some guitars. Here's a jazz guitar. and overdrive. Uh, synth basses. Synthesizer. Oh boy, we got a lot of stuff in this category. Check all of this out. Wow. So anyway, you get the idea of all this stuff. <laughs> there is just so much here. So much here. It's well worth the price. Now, in the uh, United States, I think you're going to have to get this through Thoman USA. And... Um, I'll put some information in the description about that. Uh, everywhere else, Thoman you can get it from and other places, but I really recommend this. So whatever, whatever piano or, or keyboard that you have, this will not only give you much, much more, this could become your sound module, even if you just have something that's so basic and if you're going to record something, you want the best sounds, I think you pretty much got that over here, especially with the pianos. So, hope this has been an educational video for you and you got something out of it. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.